As someone who used to participate in Pride celebrations, I find it has now become too commercial. Unfortunately, if you're not somebody who doesn't wear the rainbow flag, you're viewed as not an ally. This troubles me. So instead, we must ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Many members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints participate in pride celebrations, seeing it as a way to manifest their love and understanding that our prophet and apostles urge all of us to show towards the LGBTQ individuals. Their views as it uh, is significant way to embrace diversity within the context of faith. My issue is LGBTQ what the heck. It's now turned into A, B, C, D, I don't know. And when I grew up, you were either gay or straight or bisexual. There were none of these letters. And this is why pride has become a hard time, I guess you could say, or it's created some tumultuous feelings within my own feeling and viewpoints on how we should view this. So let me continue into what I have prepared for y'all. However, while individuals may engage in pride celebrations with their purest intent, it's critical to consider the broader message sent to our younger and more impressionable members of the church or any organization for that matter. What does our engagement in pride signify or about or say about our own adherence to the doctrine of the church? For me, as a gay member of the church, Pride Month often feels conflicted. It's a time when I observe many claiming to represent my interest, showing a lack of respect for my religious belief. During Pride Month, I face a dichotomy, either aligned with the views I will, I do not share or risk being labeled as a betrayal of my own community. You know, I've heard from so many of you in the comments when I shared this yesterday in an Instagram post of support, and I also heard from some who don't support it and I respect that I always bring it back to what would Jesus do right Sandy thank you for sharing what you just said I love being honest too and sharing it as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints we are called to show love a directive deeply embedded in our own gospel the gospel preaches unconditional love the kind that our Savior amplified. It is perhaps a time to rethink how we can best embody and convey these principles of charity and love, which are core to our beliefs, without necessarily aligning with a movement that may contradict other aspects of our doctrine. Now, I must be clear, Elder Christofferson came out and said quite a few years ago, it's okay for members to display the flag. It's okay for members to support LGBTQ plus friends and family. But for me, I have to have a balance. And I know that's kind of weird coming from the gay man who joined the church in a time when so many are leaving over this issue which is what breaks my heart. My friend Dreamer of Books 21 says, Amen. I had a pastor once call me... Oh, you got cut off. <laughs> um, Southern girl underscore, we can still love our brothers and sisters, just not the action. And you know, Elder Holland did a great talk a couple years ago at BYU when I defended him back then when he spoke at BYU. His speech was totally taken out of context. I listened to not only the speech through my ears, through watching it, but I also read it 
read the talk that he gave, and we get different point of views from each. In the scriptures, it is said that charity, the pure love of Christ, rejoice, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6. This principle guides all of us to love and respect those who are different, yet it also reminds us that true Christ-like love does not encourage what we perceive as spiritual harm. We are thus in challenged to find a balance expressing guide, uh, guidance, love, and understanding while remaining true to our faith in its teachings. Again, I must say, if you choose to support pride, I support you. If you choose not to, I support you. Because my choice and journey isn't necessarily for everybody. My friend Julia said, would you be able to reference that talk from, okay, Elder Christofferson, it was done in, um, he was meeting with the media. And I'm, I have to find my friend Becky McIntosh has the link saved on her laptop. I will have to get back to you about that. Maybe I'll share it in my stories. But I have to ask my friend Becky about that. In conclusion, the participation of Pride events by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints raises complex questions about how to express love and acceptance without compressing our religious beliefs. It's a personal journey for each member to navigate, one that requires interpretation, empathy, and a deep understanding of the teachings of Jesus Christ and the doctrine of our church. Since I came out in the 90s, pride has changed. It used to be that we were gay, straight, or bisexual. Now it's A, B, C, D, what the heck. Well, I understand that the car we drove when we got our license probably isn't the, the car we drive today. I personally have a hard time with all these acronyms. What happened to the days when we were just men and women or boys and girls? My friend Julia said, thank you for the message. Karen says, your views and ideas are great. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for being a part of this. Our church allows us to display the rainbow flag. It's our personal agency, but I choose not to support Pride Month. And that has been something I've been coming up with for quite some time. And I know Brother Swanson, I love you back. I know that this is a personal decision that each and every one needs to make. It's not for me to decide. It's required me to read a lot of James 1 5. Any of us lack wisdom, we need to take it to God. And that's exactly what I did. I took it to God, I took it to Him. Bowling underscore lover 1234 said, This is a hard topic for me. I have an elder in my district who's gay and he likes Pride Month. Hey, you know, so my friend Elder Carpenter, who served up until about a year ago, and then I see Dawn Seven's comment I'll get to. I was very much into supporting it, but it just didn't feel like it aligned with what I was studying, especially when I'm putting together my Come Follow Me lessons for my YouTube channel, it just didn't seem to align with what I was studying and what I was sharing with all of you. And that's where I had to take it to heart. And I really had to get on my knees and ask God and say, I need your help with this. So again, this was my personal, personal feeling. I don't represent the church. I am a member of the church, but I am not. I, that is our prophet to represent it. That is those who have the keys, like our stake president, not 
just not Dennis. So our friend M-A-R-C-Y says, I believe it is Christ whom I follow, but I keep my covenants of loving others for their choices. Thank you for your testimony. No, thank you for sharing. I'm glad I was able to see your comment. It means a lot to me. I just want to close with my testimony. It's so important now more than ever, I can testify developing a testimony in Jesus Christ. Not the one teaching the class, or not the speaker of that day, or not your, our young women's president, or a Relief Society, or Elders Quorum president. Developing it in our Savior is key. And I know that as we continue to strive to be more like our Savior, we can learn to understand more like He does. I know that this gospel has absolutely, without a doubt, I'm approaching my seven year mark of being baptized. I cannot imagine now more than ever living without this gospel or living without the Holy Ghost. And I know that as we strive to be better disciples of our Savior, we can become closer to Him. And I say that as my testimony in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I saw a comment from my friend Michael. So I just want to get to that. My friend Michael is also gay. Um, and he wrote, Pride Month is more than a flag. And I don't agree with this message behind it. And I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, he's also following the covenants. He was brought up in the church, and he's living the same commandments as every brother and sister in the gospel who is single. And I know that I am humbly honored to call my friend Michael a friend, as he's not alone. We're all in this together. So thank you so much for joining this evening. I pray you have a great Sabbath tomorrow. And I'm gonna go and prepare my YouTube Come Follow Me lesson. I actually am talking about pride in that. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna share some of it with you. I wrote in my Come Follow Me lesson for this, for, that I'm doing tomorrow for next week, that pride is, um, it's prosperity and pride in Alma chapter four, reflects on the period of prosperity and the dangers of pride and contention that followed. See how Alma's decision to step down from his role to focus on his spiritual duties speaking uh, um, sparked and a spiritual form that he took on I'm sorry, I just, I started to share some of that and then I felt I didn't want to. So the spirit was saying, stop. And I wasn't listening. So I'm going to save it for tomorrow. You guys have a great day and thank you for tuning in.